good morning, everybody. How are you guys? I'm super tired. I'm like running on two bananas and a donut and about a gallon of coffee. Um, I'm exhausted. I got here last night, so I'm pretty nervous. I'm like shaking right now. Um, and I'm also not making eye contact because I'm nervous. Um, but I'm happy to be here with all of you. Before we start, if, if we could all say a little prayer and uh, kind of put ourselves in our place. So we say in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, Father, it's, it's not even enough to call you Father. It's not enough to call you Lord, to call you Savior, to call you the Rock. But you are. You are. You love us. You love us completely. And when we're nothing, when we're, when we're specks of dust, when we're dirt, we're with you. And you, you are so much more. When we are little, you are much, much more. And you are everything and you fill us today. And you fill us with love. It's nothing that I can do. It's nothing that I can say. But it's you. And you're here. And I know it, Father, and I know it. I feel you. I can breathe you in. I can breathe you out. And I can see you and I can feel you. And I ask you, Lord, that you, you fill everyone in this room. Fill us with, with not just grace and goodness and, and energy, but with you, with you, with you, with you. If I want to be one with you, Father, let me. Let me be filled by you and just love us, Father, and just love us and be in communion with us. And in this we pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Um, my name is Robert again. I am quite old. I'm not on a campus at all anymore. I did do campus base five years ago um, in the Philippines at a school called Ateneo de Manila University for four years. We got 300 members. How many do you guys have? Um, That's right. We've been around 20 years. Um, It's also Youth for Christ there, so it's a little different. But I did that for four years. Um, I ended up staying in uh, a year for fun in the Philippines, working around there. And then I came back to Florida, where I'm from. Uh, and just recently, I moved to Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, in Baltimore, I do um, I work with a nonprofit called the Jesuit Volunteers. So, any of you guys are seniors, come find me later on. What we do is um, we place full-time volunteers to work with marginalized populations all around the country, working with the poor, with the homeless, with refugees, immigrants. Um, and they work, and our volunteers, they work 40 hours a week, 365 days a year. Um, they live together in houses, and uh, they, bring, they bring Christ to the cities through their service and through their love of, of all of Christ's children, all of God's children. So that's what I do up in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm lucky to have found a community up there. Um, represent this whole front panel has been Baltimore. What's up? Um, <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that, that's brought me back here. I'm happy to be back in Florida, in Tampa, where I'm really from. This used to be the church I went to when I was a child, so it's happy, I'm happy to be here. But that's not why we're here, to talk about me. We're here to talk about, I don't know. Um, Josh said the verse earlier, if I can read it again. It's this cool prayer. Jesus is praying to Jesus in the Gospel of John, right? And he says, at the very end of this prayer, he says, I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love that which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. Um, And that's the very end of that verse, or this long soliloquy of Jesus. He starts out with a little, he starts out with a longer prayer. It's a long prayer. The whole chapter, John 17, is this prayer, it's called the prayer of Jesus. He starts out by saying, I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for the ones you have given me, because they are yours. 
And if, I, and I think we start there, right? We start there. Jesus, you know, before he even says, I want, I want your love, God, to be in them, he's just saying, I pray for them. I pray for them. I pray, I pray for them because you gave them to me and they're yours. I don't pray for the world. Isn't that cool? He says, I don't pray for the world. I don't care. I don't care about the world at all. And what is he talking about, right? I think as humans, I think Christ knows this very well too. As humans, we do pray for the world, right? Let's be very honest with ourselves. We want to be recognized. We want to be loved. We want to be um, famous, Instagram famous. Um, We want to be a guitar player, a rock star. That's Pat Cornell, the rock star. Um, We want all these things, and we pray for them a lot, and that's very normal, right? But here's Christ saying, I don't pray for the world. I'm not praying for riches. I'm not praying for success or fame. I'm praying for them. I'm praying for all of you guys. And I've been there, right? I've been at that point where I prayed for the world. I, I wanted to, my lifelong dream ever since joining this ministry is is leading a worship at conference. I remember the first time I went to conference and I was like, man, I want to do that so bad. You know? I want to, and I've never done it. <laughs> and I think that, that that's, that's, that's a sign from God saying, what, what, why do you even care? You know? Who cares? Who cares who's leading Praise Fest? Right? You're pray, why are you praying for that? And yet I still pray for it. You know? I said, I remember Pat asking me, do you want to be on a service team? And I was like, oh, God, this is it. <laughs> and it didn't happen, and it didn't happen. And thank God it didn't, because I'd, be, I'd have the biggest head in the world. Um, and yet here I am still praying for those things, praying for the success, you know, praying I do well, and all these things. And it, and it, and it falls short, right? Here I am just filling up my prayers, asking for these things, asking for the grace of God and all these good things, but they, they fall short. The world ultimately falls short. But it feels good, right? It feels good when we do get those things. When I remember when I was in college, um, I went to the Philippines. I was an American in the Philippines, so if any of y'all know what that feels like, it feels great. Um, <laughs> Your passport's blue, um, and it feels good. It, it's it's a really like like it fills you up, right? Um, I played basketball over there. Um, I was active in like the residence hall. I was active in YFC, SFC, whatever. Um, and I had a great life, right? I had a girlfriend that I loved. She loved me. All these things, and I remember. I remember I posted a profile picture once and some girl commented and she said, well, look at you, buff guy who wears glasses, who loves Jesus and plays guitar and plays basketball. And I was like, that's awesome. And then like all these people liked the comment because that's when uh, liking comments was possible. And I remember getting that and I was like, man, this feels great. This feels great. This is exactly what I want. I'm doing all the right things, right? I'm doing all the right things. I'm coming to worship. I'm playing guitar. I'm I'm taking care of my body, and I'm, I'm doing well in school, all these things. I was doing great, all the right things. Yet here is Christ saying, I don't pray for the world. I could care less. I could care less. All that's nothing, right? I pray for them. Christ is saying at the very beginning, I don't pray for the world. I pray for them because you have given them to me, and they are yours. Not these riches, not, not anything before me, but for them, because they are yours, right? And that alone tells us, okay, this is who you are. You're not a guitar player. You're not a basketball player. You're not a straight-A student. None of us are, probably. Um, you're not a YFC or SFC leader. You're not a campus-based chapter head. I'm sure all of you guys hold positions. That's why you're here, right? Because you guys are leaders. You guys are leaders. It feels good, right? But you're not that. God says they are yours. He's not saying, I pray for them 
because they are leaders. I pray for them because they are good people. I pray, I don't pray for them because they, they can play guitar and they can sing songs and they can give talks. I pray for them because they are yours. He could care less about how many talks you've given, how many camps you've led, how many CLPs you've done. All he's saying is that they're yours. And that, that's it. And he gives it freely, right? He gives it so freely. Ultimately, unconditionally. And I don't even know what that looks like because I'm human and like, I can't even fathom what unconditional looks like, right? Because I'll give of myself. I'll give my whole self. I'm tired right now. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I've, I've said a lot, yes to a lot of things and it's wearing me down. And I, can, I feel like, no, I'm loving my people. I'm loving, loving this ministry, you know? It's awesome. And I can give and I can give and I can give. But imagine God doing the same exact thing. And I think that's what love is, right? Like, think about it. When I, when I had a girlfriend, um, she gave a lot to me. And I gave a lot to her, right? Like, I gave her time. I gave her gifts, food, whatever. She gave me time, gifts, food, whatever. Um, and then you kind of assume that identity, right? Like, oh, like they would see my girlfriend and be like, oh, you're Rob's girlfriend. You give a lot of things to him, so you, you're Rob's girlfriend. Or I gave a lot of things to my girlfriend, so you're like, oh, that's your, I don't know, Jennifer's boyfriend, you know? Um, I'm, the names have been changed for, you know. Uh, um, that feels good, right? You're like, yeah, you know what? I am. I am her boyfriend, and I love her. You know, I'm giving her everything. And imagine if that feels good, if that's, that's us humans giving love and giving ourselves. Imagine God. Imagine God giving himself to you, giving everything to you, literally everything, this whole world. I was looking at these things during worship, these little dots, and I was like, man, he gave me that. He's given me all of this, right? I mean, it sounds funny, but he's given you all of this. And yet, how many, how many of you are looking around and being, oh, you're God's child? Oh, you're God's daughter? Or you're, or you're God's son? I see that, because God gives you everything. How many of you are saying that? None of us. What we look at is, oh, you're, you're Ronnie's girlfriend, you know? Or, or whatever. Or, you're, or even this. Oh you're, oh, you're Gainesville's chapter head. You give everything to Gainesville. You give everything to Connecticut. You must be Connecticut's area head. But what he's saying, what God is saying is, I'm, I'm giving you everything. I'm giving you everything. Oh. <laughs> Even time. Um, and that's, that's our identity. You're God's child because he gives you everything, just like a human would, just like a girl would or a guy or your pet, you know? When your dog loves you, you're like, oh, you're, you're Oliver's dad, you know? <laughs> right? I know y'all love dogs and... Be like, oh, yeah, you, you're the one who, you're Oliver's dad. But imagine, imagine, just imagine if you just recognize that God is giving you everything to every single person in this room very equally, unconditionally. Then how are we not looking at each other saying, oh, you're God's son? What's that like? That must be awesome. Yeah, here we are afraid to do that, right? Because all we want is to be a student leader. All we want to be is famous in school. All we want to do is get good grades. All we want to do is go to med school, go to law school, graduate. All I want to do is be a graduate of college. And let's be honest. Like, is that it, really? Like, I don't want to look at you and be like, oh, yeah, you're the one studying engineering. Oh, yeah, you're the one studying physical therapy. No, man. God is literally saying right here, I don't pray for the world, I pray for them because they are yours and you give them. You gave them to me. I should be looking at every single one of you saying, oh, you're loved by God. That's cool. I don't care what you study. I don't care 
how many chords you can play or how many notes you can hit or how many shots you can hit on a court. All I care about is that you're loved by God, right? I don't care how many worship songs you've sang. All I care about is that, that God says they're yours, Father. They're yours. That's what we got to pray for. And that's where we start, right? That's where our prayer starts. Not for the world, but for them, for you. To know, to recognize that I'm God's child. Because once we recognize that, our identity's unshakable. You can post as many things on Instagram as you want, but you're never any of those things because you've realized I'm the son or daughter of God. He loves me completely. He gives me everything. I'm his. Right? And so we can go. We can go into the world and whatever. You know, do, do, you can then go on to be a student leader. As long as you know, all that matters is that I'm a child of God. And Jesus goes on into, into this cool soliloquy. If you keep reading that, if any of y'all brought your Bible and are reading along with this session, he says, as you sent me into the world, so I send them into the world. He says, I send them, the ones you gave me, the ones that are yours, I'm sending them into the world. Right? But let's be honest. How many of us came into this world, came into the world of college, and said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this place. I'm going to rock it, dude. I'm going to start Campus Base. We're going to get 200 members. Not 300, but you know, 200. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a difference. I'm going to learn guitar. I'm going to get all the talk outlines and give them all. And you know, we're going to have a COP, and we're going to change things. You've said that before, and you've probably heard it from all of your leaders. You've probably heard it from all your leaders, right? But that's not, who, that's, that's not what God's saying. He's saying, I'm sending you into the world. I'm not sending you to change the world or to, to define the world. I'm sending you into the world. There's no, there's no bar that says, okay, God doesn't say, all right, you got to do all these things to get into heaven. You gotta give a talk, go to mass every weekend, do all these things, and you can go to heaven. He says, no, go into the world, be a part of it. Be a part of the riches, be a part of the success. You're my son, and I give it all to you. I'll give you that degree, I'll give you that, that guitar, I'll give you that skill, I'll give you that love, I'll give all of that to you. He's not saying, here, own it. He's saying, be a part of it. He's saying, be present to it. We're not called to change anything, right? And that includes others. Who are we to say to each other, oh, you're, you're, um, whatever, you're the student leader, you're the guitar player, you're the singer, you're the dude with the nice hair, you're the girl with the nice eyes. What good is that? We sell each other short, right? We sell each other short when we say things like that. And it's, and it's not fair. It's not fair to God, first of all. Because God didn't say, no, you're not the girl with the nice eyes. You're my daughter. And here you are trying to tell her that she's just the girl with nice eyes. Don't, don't lie to God like that. And don't lie to yourself like that. Don't be like, I'm the dude with the nice hair. Or whatever. I'm the dude with a nice wardrobe. You know? Don't sell yourself short. You're not called to own the riches, own the wardrobe, own the success. You're called to just be a part of it. Right? And he says that. I send you into the world. A lot of times we look at saints as our examples, right? And we say, well, look at them. They, they changed the world. They, they did good things, right? They, they made a difference. I want to be like that. But that, that's not what made them saints. You know, they're not saints because they, they made a difference in the world, which they did, but that's, that's irrelevant. God didn't say, okay, 
you can come with me because you're, you're, you did good. He says that to all of us, equally. Not because you're good. He says, you can come with me, period. Now that's it. That's all he says. You can come with me. I love you. He doesn't say you got to complete all these things. And that's the criteria for being a saint. Is to be loved. How often do we let ourselves just be loved? Think of all the people in your community. You always be like, oh, when someone says I love you, be like, oh, no, I don't, no, I don't need that. I don't deserve that. I'm ugly or I'm, not, I'm no good. I can't play guitar or I can't run a camera or I can't stand up and speak in front of people. No, no. God doesn't care about that. God doesn't, doesn't have a checklist for you. You can't do anything right that will get you into heaven. You're just loved. And so how can we accept that, right? How can we accept that love of God, knowing that we're human, knowing that we're short and we know, you know, we fall short and we try to do the right things because we know we fall short. And that's where this verse, our anchor verse, comes into play. He says, at the very end of this prayer, he says, I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love that which you love me may be in them and I in them. It has nothing to do with how good you are. It has nothing to do with how much you can give God. It has nothing to do with you pouring out your heart to him. It has to do with everything that God says that I may be in them. He doesn't say, Father, bring them close to me. Bring them to me, Father. Bring them, bring them to heaven. He says, I want to be in them. God doesn't want everything from you. He wants everything for you. Uh, we're, like, all, we, all, all we're doing in our lives is trying to, I want to glorify God by you know, being a good student. I want to glorify God by being a leader and all these things, by leading worship at conference. But God, God could care less. He says, I want to give everything for you. Here is everything. Right? I don't care what you give me. I'm God, bro. You know? You think you can give enough to God? No. It's never going to be enough. That's fine because he already gives you everything. And you have to let that drive you, right? We, we get caught up with giving everything to God, all of our skills, and we make these things more important than the very fact that God has already given you all of this. Like, there's no point system, right? <laughs> Whew! There is a clock, though, so you know I'm on it. Um, <laughs> um, I'll just stand here. Um, there's no point system, right? There's no point system. None of you are going to go to heaven more than the other person. None of you. It's because you give more talks or you're a leader or you said yes to the Lord. No, man. God says, dude, just let me love you. That's real. That's real, man. And we don't let humans do it. So how could I even let God love me? I just have to realize that he's given me everything. He's given me life. It's not that he gave me two arms or two legs or eyes and ears or he made me sound in the mind or whatever. No, he just, he just loves. You'll go to heaven just as much as the dude with no arms and no legs. You'll go to heaven just as much as the dude who can't speak or the lady who can't walk or see. He loves each and every one of you equally and with everything. Like that song. He, you know that song, With Everything? Probably not. You know, kind of young. But um, it, it's funny to me. Like All these songs, man, it's all about how much I can give everything to God. 
But now I've come to this realization in worship, man. It's like, dude, this is literally God pouring everything out on me. I was standing in worship here, in worship here, over here. Like, and I heard all you guys worshiping the Lord and, you know, offering your life. And, you know, it's all for you, right? It's all for you. I was like, oh, they're so good. You know? <laughs> Y'all are so awesome. But when I sit in worship now, all I, all I hear is God singing these songs to me. That's all I hear. I hear God saying, it's all for you, bro. Yeah, we bros. Um, he, says, he says, it's all for you. It's all for you, man. I give my life for you. And that... You're gonna, you want me to sing it back to you? It's not even enough, man. Just give it to me, God. Pour it down, man. Pour it down. And that's when my life transformed. When I stopped keeping track of how much I can give God, how much I can offer my life to Him, that's when my life changed. When I stopped caring about... Because people always told me, oh, you should be a full-time worker. Oh, you should be a priest. Oh, you make a good dad, you know? I was like, all right, I'll, I'll consider all these options. Um, <laughs> but what, what I was missing was in all those things, it wasn't about, okay, what can I do for the Lord? It was, in all those things, it was, God's giving me all of this. Not that I can be all three, maybe two, but um, he's giving it all, right? He's giving it all to me, to you, because you're his. And here's Christ saying, I may be in them. It's not about how fast you run to the Lord. It's not about how high you lift your hands to Him. You're here because you're loved. And you've heard that a million times. I guarantee it. I guarantee you've heard it. You heard it at Talk 1. You've heard it at Talk 1 at COP. You heard it at Talk 1 at Youth Camp. If you join in the Youth Camp. You heard it from your parents. You're here because you're loved. You're here because God brought you here. But I'm telling you right now, how, how often do you realize that? How often do you come to these things and be like, oh, I'm coming here because I want to be good. I want to be a good SFC member. I want to do the right thing. I want to do the right thing for you, Lord. We use that excuse. It's for you, God. It's for you. It's all for you, you know? And it's funny. It is funny. It's funny to me because that's, that's God doing the same exact thing to me. He's saying, I brought you here not to be good, not to be holy, not to be a saint. I brought you here because I love you. And that's what's going to happen today, right? That's what's going to happen this whole weekend. You're not holier than anybody. Oh, I came to conference two days early for campus-based conference. Where are you, you know? No one cares. Well, maybe they care, but God doesn't, you know? God doesn't care. You're here because you're loved. And there, are, and there are millions of people out here who need to know that. If anything, we fall, we've fallen short by not filling this room up. And not letting other people know that they're loved by God. Because we're too obsessed with loving God ourselves. That we forget that we're all loved already. We're too caught up in trying to love God, be all these things for the Lord, that we forget that God just loves us. You know? We get caught up in our titles. We get caught up in these conferences. And we forget that, man, everyone in the world needs to know that they're loved by the Lord, that that you're God's. And we're going to come to adoration in a bit. And I know in adoration, we like, to, we like to be the ones to be like, Lord, I'm right in front of you. I see you in here is everything. Here's my life. I'm going to get on my knees. I'm going to put my forehead on the ground and love you, Father. Right? Don't even lie. Everyone's done it. Right? Y'all laughing. Like, oh, yeah, that's me. I'll do that. But that's what we're going to do. Not because, not because you love God but because he wants to be with you. He put himself in the flesh and blood of his son, Jesus Christ, inside bread 
so that he could be with you. Not so that you could be with him. Not to make you holy, but because he's good. The Lord is all of that. And he wants to be with you. So when we come to adoration, I want it to be for you guys, not this offering of your life, not this offering of who you are and what you've done for the Lord, but just be loved. And I know that's difficult. I don't even know what that looks like. But I know what love feels like. And I just want to be loved. And I know that he loves me. And I challenge you to be that monster. There are, there are 30 people missing from this conference right now. And they're not going to be able to come before Christ and see the love that he's pouring down in the way you're about to see it. So it's your job for the next four days to be a monstrance. Because Christ says, I am with you. I am in them. You're not with me. I am in them. And for the next four days, that has to be your identity. So we're going to come before Christ. And let him be in us. We're not going to be in him. We're not going to be one with you, Lord. Lord, you're going to be with me. You're going to be in me, and I'm going to let everyone know that you're also with them. I'm going to let everyone else know that Christ, you, are in them. Because that's what he's saying in our very verse right here, if you have not bought into it yet. Does that sound all right? And I know it's difficult. It's difficult to be loved. And I can't say it enough, but you are. You are loved, man. And I mean that sincerely. And so, I'd like to end with a prayer and just the way we start. But when we pray today, and you close your eyes, I want you to not pray because you love the Lord. Let's pray because God loves us. There's there's nothing that we can do. There's nothing that we can say that makes us better, that makes us holier, that makes us more loving. Because God loves all of us. And I pray not because I'm good. And I want to be good. I just pray because, God, you love me. And that's where we're going to be before him in the flesh. So we start in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, I fall short. I'm human. I'm nothing. But you, you, Father, you... You love me, and you're in me, and you're in all of us. Whether you're at conference or not, whether I'm here or at home, Father, you're, you're in me. From the moment I enter the world, even before I enter the world, you were in me. Whether or not, Father, I attend a conference, whether or not, I pray to you, Father, whether or not I kneel before you, you're in me. And I'm your child. And you love me completely. Even, Father, when I eat from the pigs, the pigs feed, and I squander everything, you're running towards me. And, Father, I want to let that happen. Not because I'm good, not because I'm holy, not because I'm here, but because you are, because you love. And I pray, Father, that everyone, everyone, whether they're here or not, whether they're on their way or never coming, Know that you're with me and know that you're with them. You are with all of us. And I say thank you. And I say thank you, Father. And 
I want you guys to, to keep your eyes closed. Stay alert and stay awake. Fall into God's arms, not because you're surrendering, but because God surrenders everything to you. There's no need to control it. There's no need to contain it. Just be loved. And notice how he loves. Notice in your breath how he loves you. Notice in how you close your eyes that he loves you. You're not before God because you love Him. You're before Him because He loves you. Oh, how He loves, how He loves, how He loves. And if there's a message today from God... Let it be that He loves you. You're going to leave this conference and everyone's going to be like, wow, you're so good. You must really love the Lord. And I hear that a lot. But the message is different. The message is changing. The message is, no, He loves me. And He loves you. It's not that I love the Lord. It's that He loves me and He's given me all these things. I don't go to Mass because I'm good. I go to Mass because He gives it to me. I don't go to adoration because I want to be with God. I go to adoration because He is present to me and He loves me and He wants to be with me. So just listen to this song. And you'll see how he loves you.